Hello and welcome to my hot stream. We're going to be doing something different today. I'm going to be going over role playing material. This is something I used to do when I was younger, a long time ago. I'm going to be talking about Role Master going over a little project that I was interested in back in 2002. And to do that, let's go back, 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 back 30 years. I was 13 when I got into Role Master. Started with MERP. Middle Earth role playing, and it was a very different experience. I'd had touched upon D and D, like the very basic D and D from turn of what 1980, 1979, but I'd never played something so complicated and yet so interesting. So Middle Earth, if you don't know, was a sort of easy way to get into Role Master. Obviously, it's seeped in lore from Middle Earth, so you could really engage with it. It was quite fun, but eventually we did start bringing in the more complicated rule set of Role Master. And that was quite interesting because Role Master just exploded in terms of the options, in terms of the professions. There were just so many what we call classes in D&D. &D. There was just so much to do. Spell lists were expanded. You didn't have just 10 levels. You had up to 50 levels. So it was quite an amazing amount of extra detail that you could put in. Anyhow, I was a player. I wasn't a GM till a bit later. So I was very interested, and I came across the Creature Law, which is their creature set. And so that was a really interesting experience because amongst all the various different Middle Earth inspired and Shadow World, which is their original setting, creatures were the undead. And I didn't really have any real interest in horror or undead before then, but I loved the detail. There was quite a lot of detail especially compared to just generic fantasy. There was so much in there. So I was really captivated by the variety of undead. Wasn't so interested in some of the other aspects, but I just loved the variety. And it wasn't until maybe, I don't know, a year into playing Rollmaster that we started expanding to the full set of companions, extra errata, and so on. And of course, I came across the Necromancer class. I was not allowed to play it, of course, because it's a Necromancer, right? I did make a character, but never got around to playing it. But yeah, I was really, really captivated by the level of detail. Again, it's just amazing. If you go through the Necromancer, there was so many cool aspects to the spells. Maybe not all of them were very useful. Maybe there's a lot of overlap. But regardless, you had fine grain detail. That's something that Rollmaster was so good at. And the spells, there was so much utility, so much world building within the spell list. So that was quite cool. That eventually dried up. We changed to... Second edition D&D, &D, which was going from color to black and white. It was like going back in time. And I did play, at that point, my Necromancer. And I played a D&D Necromancer up to like level 13. And that was pretty cool. Obviously, again, second edition was very limited. But I got to do all the things I want to do. Create undead, play around with various different world building issues. Like how do you navigate having an undead army? alignment for example because i started off as true neutral then i started growing into neutral evil there was all those issues right playing with your friends but also the idea of necromancer is quite a selfish individualistic creating power creating at least an army and things like that so there was all kinds of issues there that we kind of got into we never really fully fleshed out because it would have ended probably with friends fighting and dead um, characters all over the place but regardless pretty cool Again, there's a lot of things you can do with Necromancers, so I loved that aspect of it. But again, the the D and D is just so bland. At least second edition, it wouldn't be until third edition, and I think it was the Ravenloft White Wolf expansion where you did definitely get to see undead characters. I I actually made one. This was back right at the turn of the century when I was playing online. My first experience playing online, my last, and I played an undead character in Ravenloft and that was also a great experience and really shaped my interest in making my own book based around undead creatures playing undead players and expanding back into Rollmaster the Necromancer class because by this time let's say 10 years had passed since I started playing Rollmaster gone to D&D and was interested in going back into it and of course the additions had changed there was no longer the Necromancer class in the game at all. As far as I remember, there was probably a, a some sort of profession package or something, but it didn't have anything. There was nothing there. They did not preserve it. They did not keep most of the things from Rollmaster 2nd Edition 
into the standard or fantasy versions. So I was very interested, and that's when I got around to contacting ICE in 2002. Contacted a person named Heike, but I think Heike ended up in charge of HARP, which was a new rule set. I don't know what happened to that relationship, but I think it ended. Various different other things changed. ICE has gone through a lot of changes over the years. So regardless, I was talking to this person and didn't really go anywhere. We talked for about a month. We talked back and forth about some of the things that we could do with it. Some of the things that would be okay. For example, no vampire characters because they didn't want to step on White Wolf. They didn't want to go into that. They didn't want to compete, which is kind of a pity. And I just explained to them what I did, what I could do with what I knew. Because again, Rollmaster was created... Ooh, something in the early 80s, I can't remember, as a modification of D&D. And a lot of the stuff, a lot of the figures, a lot of the stats are pretty hard to suss out and figure out. And reverse engineering is something I had to do. So I reverse engineered a lot of the information in the creature law with the stat blocks and things of that nature. And that's what I explained. I don't really think I went into much depth. I think I tried to keep it just surface level because I didn't know what I was going to get into with these guys. I didn't know if they were going to end up being interested, end up just running with the idea and just leaving me just hanging. I did not know. I didn't have a relationship with them previously. And they did give me some guidelines and so on. So it was pretty cool. But it lasted about a month. I think internally they weren't interested in continuing. And maybe the 20-year-old version of me wasn't giving them enough to work with. So in the end, that ended. Shelved the project. Just now, looking back into it as I'm getting back into Rollmaster with a new version of Rollmaster Unified. And thinking, wow, now that I do YouTube, it would be interesting to just go over this and talk about it. Do a little story time video. Now I'm going over this from quite a long time ago. I'm just looking at the doc itself and I look to have pretty much mapped out the book. And that's pretty cool. Again, it's nice to look back at your younger version of yourself and say, wow, look how productive I was. And so I really did go in deep. And now there have been many, many, many undead books in the last 20 odd years. We're going all the way back in d and I mean, I had the complete book of Necromancers, which was a horrible book, but it did give you some insight, some ways of thinking, and how to deal with and develop necromancy and undead. Regardless, uh, in those years past, there have been plenty of D&D supplements in the various different versions which have gone into undead. And that's something that, sadly, Rollmaster has not had been good at, which is keeping up with the times. And 3.5 D&D really expanded things in some ways worse, but they did allow for lots of character customization. And so undead characters, undead settings, lots of stuff about undead. It, they really expanded, and they made it much more enjoyable. So I would love to get back to that. And I think that's part of the motivation for why I wanted to do this. I wanted to see that in Rollmaster, and I still do. I don't know anything really has changed. I don't think anything has changed with Rollmaster Unified in terms of creatures, at least from what I've heard on the Discord, which is disappointing. That's neither here nor there, though. Let's talk about the book. And so I really did go through mapping the interesting aspects of playing Undead. Obviously, the motivations, the problems, issues, dangers, etc., and then I went through and developed the rule set. So the rule set was, like I said, reverse engineering. And not so much the stat blocks, because we know how the stats kind of work. They're kind of fuzzy in the old version of Rollmaster. But the abilities. And so I broke down the abilities using, at that time, I think it was Rollmaster SS standard um, or fantasy version. They had something called Talent Law which is a massive book full of options and talents and, and ways to build your character. But I kind of used it in the sense of a D&D &D perk system where you could build your character and make it a little bit more interesting. Because I think that's one of the things also that Rollmaster lacked. Abilities, just perks, talents. You made them at your character creation, that was it. D&D, &D? no, of course. It's, it's over the breadth of your character. It creates your class is sort of spread out. It makes it more interesting. Rollmaster is a skill-based thing. You just go level up, put some points in some skills. You don't, you know, you're a fighter, you're just boring. It's it's just hack and slash. You're not going to be doing like, hey, I've got this new ability, which is like whirlwind kick or something. No, you don't have that, which is really disappointing. So what I did with the undead is just that. You have starting level one basic template, and then as you go, you would grow your undead 
and you had basically these perks that you could choose from. And so it's pretty cool going through and just seeing, wow, I've got, you know, interesting rotting undead, for example. You can play rotting undead. And here's how much it's going to cost if you want to play at, for example, second level. Here are all the abilities. And here's how much it's going to cost you, etc. So I had all kinds of ways of doing it. If you wanted to sort of get to playing a Lich, for example, well, then you're going to need to be 20th level to have the full package of what Lich powers were there and available. So it was quite interesting to just to build that. If you wanted to play, for example, I don't know, a vampire, then you're going to need to be, again, level 20 to get the full. But you could sort of build your character up. You could start at the base and build your character up and get abilities here, there, and everywhere. Start with all the weaknesses, build what you can with them. And it was an interesting system. It wasn't bad. It is quite an in-depth setup. It went through all the different types of undead that you could make in Creature Law. So it was pretty cool. And then, of course, obviously, I had to go back and deal with the Necromancer, which... Again, because it had been abandoned and hadn't been really looked at, I noticed that at that time, I kind of just, I knew that, for example, Evil Cleric was just a better class for undead manipulation and so on. So I knew right away, so I put in some extra rules, changed some things around, and looking back, looking at the discussion I have seen on Discord and the forums, many of those things were good decisions to change. For example, Evil Clerics could make better undead in smaller groups. So I said, well, let's flip it then. Necromancers can make more undead. They don't have to have them continually around them like companions, and they just don't have them as powerful. It's as simple as that. And necromancers always have like an army of pretty weak undead. Maybe they have a couple of stronger undead, but a completely different take. And of course, I don't have to constantly be casting spells because that was the one of the biggest problems with necromancers in Rollmaster and various other games as well. Keeping, controlling, that's always an issue. How long the leash is. I don't remember what the evil cleric's leash was, but if you can imagine, you could never play as a character if you have a leash on a mummy, for example, it's like 100 feet or yards or meters or whatever. It's it's incredibly difficult to play that way. Nobody's going to let you play. You're going to have issues all the time. It's just not going to happen. And you're evil anyways. Let's not even get into that because that's a whole other development on the side of necromancy, which I, I was going to go into in the beginning of the book. But anyways, there's a lot of issues there. I also wanted to bring back other classes that were sort of abandoned, sort of the anti-paladin, the old school first edition D&D concept of a black paladin or black knight. Again, semi-spell user. And then, obviously, you've got to counterbalance this, of course. An undead hunter. You've got to have somebody, a vampire slayer, to balance it all out. So it was a pretty cool idea. It was very ambitious, but going back over it, I really did quite a lot with it. Fleshed out a lot. I even put in training packages. This is something back in Rollmaster Standard that was really popular. These were basically packages that you could buy at first level, or later if your GM would let you. And so I made a lot of different training packages and stuff. And all of this, I have no idea now with RMU, whether this could be ported to RMU. I have no idea, but there's a lot left to do. Like I said, fleshing out some of the introductory materials. I even put in an optional campaign setting because I'm not a huge fan of Shadow World. It was never something that was a part of my Rollmaster experience. I don't really like the concept of unlife, this sort of nebulous energy, evil energy. It kind of reminds me of like negative planar energy from back in the old D&D days, but it's a living thing. Ravenloft had a, like a living thing behind it as well. Just anyways, it just didn't appeal to me. So I had my little optional campaign setting and put in some other things like rituals and such. So that was important to expand. But there's, there's still plenty of things I could do. I still need to look at different professions to bring in. I think the three is pretty nice, but I could perhaps come up with some others. Good undead, good and neutral undead, That which D&D did a great job. Forgotten Realms, for, for example, good liches, good undead. There's a lot of expanding into good and neutral sides of things. I think it would be a really interesting addition to Rollmaster, especially archetypes, because there are none, for, especially for the creature law, which is something I really liked from D&D 3rd edition onward. I don't know what they've done with 5th edition. I think they went back. But I like the idea of building a creature set, building it from the ground up. I think RMU is going to be doing that, so that'll be something to look out for. And if it is a really nice system where you can just plug and play... That's awesome. But I know from what I read on Discord, that's the idea is that you could just run with anything. So they might already have undead rules for, for creature players. I don't know. But 
maybe there would be interest. Maybe fans would be interested in that. Maybe there'd be interest in people playing Undead in the future. I don't know what the situation is on Isis' side. I know they're looking for writers, so that's quite interesting. I might have to resubmit the idea, but I need to know what's going on with RMU for Creatures, for example, before I even know. And that could be up to a year away. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, I think it'd be a really, really useful expansion for Rollmaster. I think Rollmaster does need to up its game. It's been 20 odd years. The unified system sounds a lot like going back to basics, but yeah, they've got to make their professions more interesting, abilities, talents more interesting. Just, just again, they've got to compete with D and D, which is a bit more flashier. They need a flashier game. Critical tables are not enough. You need to have back to the original multitude of options. What really got me, just the expansiveness of it. I know that's a crazy difficult thing to balance. It's hard for players to get their heads around how many you know optional rules expanded professions, more creatures, but we want that. We want more. And if anything, we've seen it with all the other versions of D&D. We've seen people just want more campaign settings, optional books, etc. So I think they really, really need to go into doing that, maybe with an undead companion. Undead law? Who knows? So we'll have to see. Wait for RMU to come out and tell us more. But yeah, hope that was interesting. This is my first time doing a little talky talky video edited for your pleasure not something i normally get a chance to but it's great to try and experiment with the format and talk about role playing it's been so long i really want to get back into role playing if anything i would love to be gming again but the nature of online is so difficult it's hard to find people so yeah one of these days i might actually get around to it if i did write rm companion role master companion an undead companion i would need to test it out as well so that'd be something great to do anyways thank you very much for watching as always you can check out the rest of the channel it's gaming it's nothing to do with role playing actually i created the channel created my youtube channel to do role playing in sword coast legends to do gming and it didn't take off and so my whole channel my hot stream was created for role playing and it never took off and i went into other directions just gaming in general and yeah now i do card games and indies so if you're interested in that check it out. I do streaming on Twitch as well. Thank you once more for listening and I'll catch you next time.